What's up, everyone? Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure, make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today, I have a very special guest. Uh, she's going to tell us all about um, the MCAT, the new changes in the uh, MCAT, as well as some resources for you guys and some other tips uh, for you guys out there taking the MCAT. I'd like to welcome uh, Lauren uh, Siegel uh, with me today. How, how are you doing, uh, Lauren? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, can you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell, and tell us what you do at the uh, AMC and uh, kind of, um, your, your role there? Sure. Um, so I'm Lauren. I'm the Senior Communications Specialist for the MCAT team. Um, and my job is to really help students as they prepare for to take the MCAT exam um, with resources. Um, I manage our newsletters, some online content, social media feeds. Um, so I'm really here to answer your questions and provide the information you need. Okay. So we'll, we'll jump right into it, man. Um, I took the MCAT. It's, um, it's been almost 10 years since I took the MCAT, so a long time ago. I understand that it's changed a lot. Can you talk about some of the changes that uh, the new MCAT and uh, some of the changes that have occurred? Sure. So um, in April 2015, the AAMC launched a new version of the MCAT exam um, after seven years of review and development. Um, the exam tests concepts um, that medical school faculty and physicians identified as key prerequisites for um, the success in medical school, um, as well as the practice of medicine. Um, the uh, exam is designed to assess your problem solving, critical thinking, as well as your knowledge of the natural, behavioral, and social science concepts um, and principles. Um, the exam has four sections, all multiple choice, um, and they test content found at the introductory level, um, uh, bio biology, chemistry, and physics, as well as first semester psychology, sociology, and biochemistry. Okay. And those classes that you mentioned, you mentioned first semester, because uh, one of the questions, common questions I get a lot is, when should you take the MCAT? And mm -hmm. is there a dedicated time of when you guys recommend that uh, someone takes the MCAT after their sophomore year, after their junior year? Can you elaborate on that some? Sure. So um, the thing that we tell students most important is to always take the exam when they feel most prepared and ready. Yes. Um, but many students will actually take their exam in the year that they're also applying to medical school. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to think about when you actually want to go to medical school and work backwards. Um, the application cycle is a year ahead um, of when you actually want to go. So. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, also, it's important to keep in mind whether you might need to retake the MCAT exam, for example. So you might want to take the exam a little bit earlier in a testing year um, to give you that opportunity to be able to test later. Um, also, it's important to think about whether you've mastered the content that's tested on the exam, whether there's more studying you could do, or even um, if there's additional coursework that you can take. Um, but certainly, um, thinking about when you want to go to medical school is key to kind of thinking about uh, when the right time to take the exam is. Okay. And speaking about preparing for the exam, um, I know there's not one correct way to prepare for the exam. There's a lot of different resources out there. Um, what is the, uh, what do you recommend in terms of preparing for the exam? Do you recommend taking a preparatory course or I know it probably depends on the student's uh, kind of level, but uh, what do you recommend in terms of preparation for the exam? Sure. Um, so you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to prepare for the MCAT exam. It's really up to the individual student. Um, the AAMC does make um, free and low-cost resources available to help students at every stage of their preparation, from whether it's understanding what's tested on the exam to um, study resources and resources to help you practice and feel comfortable with the test day and the exam format. Um, some of the resources the AAMC make available makes available include um, the full content outline of the exam. It's a free online tool. It covers all of the concepts, content, and skills that students need to prepare for the exam. Um, we also have a guide to help students create their own study plan. Um, study guides are a really great way to um, stay organized, focused, and on track. And so the AMC has a six-step guide to help you um, have that framework to be able to develop your own study plan that works well 
with your schedule. Um, another great resource um, is to understand maybe how other students prepared for the exam. Um, certainly, um, understanding how your peers prepared is important um, for helping to kind of um, learn about uh, mistakes to avoid, lessons learned, and a great way to incorporate that into your own preparation. Um, another example of a resource to consider would be um, the thousands of review questions and videos found on the Khan Academy um, MCAT collection. So those are all free and open access. Um, to practice for the exam, the AAMC makes available full-length exams um, and practice sets that um, are all written by the test developers so they have the same features, um, functionality, look and feel, feel that you'll see on test day. Um, in terms of taking a preparation course, it really just depends on whether that's right for you. Um, there are lots of people who do it that way and plenty of people who study on their own or in study groups. Okay. And speaking about the new changes in the exam, do you think that you guys have received positive um, uh, feedback from these changes? Are people liking the new exam or are they just trying to get <laughs> comfortable um, and get used to kind of the, the new uh, testing format? What, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, the exam's been in place for, this is the fourth year of the testing oh. program, and um, it's a long exam, so I don't think we're ever going to make people feel 100% happy about it, but certainly um, it's, the exam is definitely helping um, to ensure that admissions officers are selecting students that um, fit with their programs and um, to help train the, the next generation of physicians, for sure. Got you. And you mentioned the uh, four sections of the uh, MCAT. That there's a section, psychology and social um, science. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it when I took my uh, MCAT. What, a lot of students are wondering, what is the best way or is, what resources can they use to kind of study or prepare for that portion of the exam? Um, so the psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior section um, is the newest section on the exam. Um, the AAMC has um, a resource called the Psychology and Sociology Textbook Roadmap Resource. So we reached out to publishers of psychology and sociology textbooks, um, and they took their textbooks and mapped them to the content that's tested on the exam. So they list the exact chapter and page that you'll be able to find the um, MCAT content um, so that you can be able to reach that um, easily, um, and most of those resources are um, open access, um, so you don't need to pay for them. Um, but certainly, um, the Khan Academy is another great resource to look into um, to be able to kind of get that content if you haven't taken a formal course, and to be able to review questions. Um, also, the AAMC practice products um, are also a great way to, to prepare for that as well. Okay, and what do students need to know about the registration process? Um, what kind of uh, tips can you provide them for that? Sure. Um, so uh, students will register through our MCAT registration system. It's an online system. We often recommend that students register at least 60 days in advance, um, if that's possible. Um, our testing calendar does run from January and March through September, um, and most of the testing dates are on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, but all of the information that students need to know about the testing calendar, um, registration fees, and deadlines can be found on our website at aamc.org slash MCATS. Okay. And in 2018, um, I understand these, the, there's a new testing um, administration or a system that would be utilized. Can you speak about that and the changes um, kind of in the testing format? Sure. So um, the AAMC doesn't really change the MCAT exam from year to year. The content and skills do stay, stay the same. Um, but in 2018, um, we did take advantage of the opportunity to be able to change the way the interface looks. So this is specifically okay. the um, way the exam looks, feels, and functions. So for example, we made the font and size type uh, that's on the screen look much clearer. We also have some keyboard shortcuts that students can use. Um, throughout the exam um, and we created a tool that's free for students to be able to practice and get comfortable using the interface and um, using highlight and strike through for example um, and that can be found at um, on our website at amc.org slash practice exam features okay and once you register for the exam and uh, misleading come, your days are coming up for the uh, MCAT exam what do you recommend in terms of um, the first 
or the uh, last few days before you take the test, kind of leading up to the test day. Uh, should students uh, study? Should they visit the uh, study site? Or what, what kind of recommendations would you give them? Um, so I think that's really up to the individual person what's going to work best for them. Um, we certainly, as the AMC, can't prescribe what students should do the few days before. Um, we've heard that some students the day before say no studying and, and take a break. Um, but certainly it's all about staying healthy, getting a good night's rest, um, eating well, all those sorts of things are really important. Okay. And what about the students that can't afford to either pay for the uh, MCAT or just have need some financial assistance? Are there any programs out there or any resources for them? Absolutely. So um, the AAMC firmly believes that the cost of applying to medical school should never be a barrier for any aspiring physician. Um, so the AAMC is a program called the Fee Assistance Program, which is um, designed to assist those students who without financial assistance would you know, be unable to take the MCAT exam or apply to medical schools that use the AMCAS application. Um, so if you are eligible and are awarded the Fee Assistance Program, some of those benefits include um, reduced MCAT registration fees, free MCAT preparation resources, um, up to all of your medical school applications waived for the AMCAS fees for up to 16 different medical schools, um, and, and a few more benefits as well. Um, so we encourage students to see um, our website to see if they're eligible for the program, um, and then to apply. Um, certainly, um, it's worth applying for sure. Gotcha. So you take your, uh, register for the MCAT, you take your MCAT, and then you're uh, waiting for your results. So how long should a, kind of a student expect to uh, have to wait? Um, so it takes about 30 to 35 days for us um, to send your scores um, back, and those are accessed online. Okay, so you get an email basically saying that your score is ready to be uh, viewed. Um, so it's not an email system, but um, we usually send out a tweet or um, students will just keep refreshing, but the system will automatically update. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on students who take the MCAT multiple times? Say, for instance, a student had to take it maybe two times or three times. How does that look to medical school admissions committees, and what are your thoughts on that? Um, so I think it really just depends on the medical school. Um, we often like to say when you've seen one medical school, you've seen one medical school. They're, they all have different admissions processes. Um, so it really depends. Some medical schools will look at your higher, highest score. Some will look at both of them. Um, some may even do an averaging system. Um, so if students are curious how the medical schools will look at their multiple scores, we encourage them to actually contact the medical schools directly. Um, but it really just depends on, on that individual program. Gotcha. And are you aware of any studies or any um, uh, studies out there that look at success in medical school, kind of correlate that with uh, the MCAT? Um, um, sure. So the AMC um, actually has an entire team that's dedicated to um, assessing the predictive validity of the MCAT exam. And if students are interested in knowing how that, um, that research is going, um, uh, we certainly encourage them to check out our website. All of that information can be found um, on the AAMC website. Okay. And Lauren, what other, what other tips would you have for students out there who are preparing to take their MCAT here soon or have taken it and going to retake it again? What, what kind of tips would you give them? Um, I mean, I think one of the things would be to definitely contact your pre-health advisor. Um, a lot of students don't know that they have a pre-health advisor or if they don't have one on campus to really even think about talking to a faculty member. Mm -hmm. These are people who will help you um, determine what courses might be beneficial to take, can help you with identifying different ways to prepare for the exam, um, maybe even help you identify students to form a study group with. Um, and they will be people that will help you not just with taking the MCAT exam, but also preparing for medical school. Um, so those people are really key to um, seek out on, on your campus. Awesome. Lauren, I'd like to thank you uh, for coming on today and kind of uh, telling us all the uh, everything a student needs to know about taking the MCAT applying for registration when they receive their scores. Um, if students want to access the resources that you mentioned, where can they uh, find those? 
Sure. Um, so the best place would be our website, which is um, at aamc.org slash MCAT. Um, but we also, um, I manage our MCAT Twitter feed. So if you have any questions, um, you can contact us on Twitter at aamc underscore MCAT. Um, we also have a fantastic contact center who's available by phone and email throughout the week. So we encourage you to ask questions there as well. Okay. Lauren, thank you so much again. Uh, for coming on today. I appreciate it. Thank Every you so much. You're welcome. Uh, everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time.